Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Here's your host, Cyrus Webb. Welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. But for our radio audience here in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com, we're glad that you all could be with us. Also, tuning in to our friends at iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcast, we're glad you all could be with us as well. well. When I talk about black history, a lot of times, of course, you may think about the month of February, where black history is celebrated. But our next guest has given us a great book that not only explores black history, but also to show us the importance of recognizing the accomplishments of everyone around us, even yourself. We're excited to welcome best-selling author George McCalman to our program. His new book is called Illustrated Black History, Honoring the Iconic and the Unseen. We're going to talk to him about the idea that kind of sparked this book, but also what he hopes you as readers and viewers of the book are able to take away from it. George, thank you so much for the time today. really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. As I said, already the book is a bestseller on Amazon, so again, congratulations for that. What has it been like for you, George? I know it officially came out this week, but what has it been like for you to already see the response to it? Um, it's been it's been really, um, and I say this in the best possible way, overwhelming because I've been working on this project for four years now, and the original project started six years ago, and so it's been a very oh, wow. incubated thing that only a few people have seen, you know, so it's it's out in the world now, and so I'm seeing the responses, and it's really incredible. So I want to talk about the idea. You kind of outlined it in the book, uh, George, so I definitely want our audience to take the time. I know a lot of times we skip introductions of books and get right into it, but I definitely want our audience to read these yeah. because I love the idea of being able to tell us how this all began. You had this idea. Talk to us about the idea and what it was like for you to kind of see it being brought to life. Well, I, I had the original idea because there was a vacuum, because um, this book, the subject matter, um, there aren't a lot of books on it. And there was no book uh, that was a contemporary telling, you know, of 400 years of American history outside of children's books and academic historical tomes. And I, I just really felt that this needed to exist. And and now it does. And I said in my introduction, George, something that I really mean. I love the subtitle of the book, Honoring the Iconic and the Unseen. There are so many things that we have been able to benefit from uh, and individuals have not been able to get the credit for those things. And even today, as I mentioned, what you've been able to achieve in creating your own history, you know, a best-selling author, being able to share these stories, what was it like for you to explore you know, some of the individuals that we may know but others who may have gone unrecognized? You know, this book was also kind of my personal journey of, in some cases, reacquainting myself with um, figures in our cultural history but also there were a lot of people that I, I myself did not know that I was learning about the first time as I was researching the book. And so it was an education and a re-education for me also, and I wanted to make that accessible to other people. I, I, I've said this in, um, all throughout the process. I, I don't want anyone to feel terrible about not knowing a lot of the people in the book. That's why this book is here, is for them to get to know these figures. Well, I definitely did not know a lot of them myself, and and I think that that is what makes a book like this so important. You said something else so interesting I want to go back to, George, and that was uh, about the vacuum there. And I mentioned again in my introduction, a lot of times when we, when we say the words black history, we automatically think about the month of February. But, you know, there are, of course, campaigns out there that talk about, you know, celebrating black history year-round. How important has that been for you mm-hmm. to make sure that that it's not just relegated to a month, that we are actually recognizing these individuals who have paved the way for so many, including ourselves. Yes. Um, I Well, part of the original proposal with this book was that I did not want it to come out uh, during Black History Month. I, I was clear, you know, part of, uh, I'm a designer, and I've designed a poster called um, Black History is Every Month, because that's my philosophy. It's, 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 you know, Black History Month was created to address uh, black history not being celebrated. And so there's a reason that it's there. It's not, it's not arbitrary. And, and it, it plays an important part in reminding Americans that black history is American history. But I think that there is a tendency to just kind of put it, 
put everything in the bucket of February of every year. And what I wanted to say was to open up the conversation beyond Black History Month to show that this is American history, everyone should know about it, and it's every day of the year. And I think, too, to, to go along with that point, George, the fact that all of us benefit, right? I mean, all of us benefit from it regardless yes. of, of race, for sure. Talk to us about that conversation. Yes. What has that been like for you to, I mean, to kind of talk about the fact that, especially when it comes to these individuals that are, are, are profiled in the book, that these are not just relegated to benefiting a certain group. All of us benefit from what they've been able to do. Yeah, well, it, it is changing the conversation from, Black history being over there in the corner that you only get need to remember it once a year to being something that is part of the fabric. You know, one of the, the invisible subheads of the subtitles of the book is that this is American history. It is something that every single American should know. These are all figures that everyone should know about. And I wanted to create um, a way to make that accessible and to make that clear that that is my philosophy also. So one thing we we need to make sure, well, I want to make sure that we talk about, George, which I have not mentioned yet, is not only are you helping us to kind of group these together. I mean, you as a designer, as you mentioned, you're able to be able to have these, you know, these different portraits you've been able to do. What was that like for you to kind of give us a book within a book? Because these are, from what I understand, the first time these have all been come together uh, in in a collection like this. What was that like for you to have your art in this collection uh, as we're kind of profiling these individuals? Well, you know, it was a really, um, you know, I'll just say it. It was a really spiritual experience to commune with all of these figures. Uh, uh, I got, I, I received a letter from someone yesterday talking about the experience that they had looking through the book, and they said that felt like all of these illustra- these portraits, illustrations, it felt like they had all sat for me personally, and it was the best compliment I've received so far. Like, there's an intimacy in what I wanted to create with these portraits. I wanted you to feel the emotional part of of these accomplishments also, that they're not just figures, but they're human beings. They're all human. There are some, of course, that will automatically uh, stick out. Of course, one of my favorites, Octavia uh, Butler, for sure, George. Mm -hmm. Um, Ben Carson, I mean, of course, you you cannot, I mean, his his accomplishments have been so many. They really do run the gamut. I'm curious, as we're talking about the unseen, who was someone that kind of stuck out for you? Well, there were there were quite a few. I mean, Augusta Savage is someone whose work I knew, but I didn't know that much about her. Um, Laron Brooks. Um, I wanted to know more about Claudette Colvin, who is um, someone that I also knew was a footnote in my understanding, but she also played a really seminal role in launching the public face of um, of the civil rights movement. And so I wanted to really kind of focus on a lot of the people that who are on the fringes of how they are related, but I wanted to show that they're really towering figures in our understanding of history. Yeah. Have you gotten to a place where you can appreciate your own history, the the history that you are creating and that you are living right now? Well, I, I don't know that I feel entirely comfortable. You know, many times during the making Um, the people around me reflected that this book was a pioneer and it took me years to kind of feel comfortable representing that. Um, And and that I, you know, this book is also the the behind the scenes of the making of the book is really odd and distinct in that I am the writer, artist, and designer of the book. You know, several times in the process, I would ask my publisher, have you ever had another author who has done all of the things that I have done with this book? And the answer was consistently, no, you're you're the first. Yeah, and, and you, not many people can say that, George. <laughs> it's true. You, know, you know, that that's it's the true. thing. It's and true. I, and that's why I wanted to ask you the question, because that's the thing. Not Not many people can say they were the first to do, you know, blank, 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 and to be able to do that and to show other people what's possible. So let me turn it around then on you. What is it like for you then to be able to, by doing something like this, to show other people what is possible? Um, well, you know, I, I had an uh, an advantage in that 
I spent 15 years in the publishing industry, so I knew the inner workings. I, I was uniquely qualified to make this book because I, I, I know all aspects of publishing. And so I was able to come to it from an insider's perspective, um, which made the process simpler. I mean, it was still a difficult process, but it was, it was something that I, I had the background to actually tackle. So if I'm giving the advice to anyone, it's to make sure that you understand the industry, that you understand the process, and that you have people around you who are really committed to your vision, that are not going to second guess what you want out of the experience. Really great advice. Uh, George, really glad that we had a chance to talk. Congratulations to you again. It's lovely on to this, talk on to this, you. On this Thank beautiful you, project. Thank again, you. Illustrated Black History is the title honoring the iconic and the unseen. You can get it through our friends at Amazon.com or through your favorite local bookstore. If they don't have it, I know they'd be more yes. than happy to order it for you. George, how can our audience stay connected with you? Um, so my social media handle across the board is my last name, McCalman, M-C-C-A-L-M-A-N. C-O, McCalman Co. And you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. George, again, congratulations. and looking forward to our next conversation together. Thank you so much. Me too. Have a, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you as well. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webster. And as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. So let's go make today amazing. Take care.